Well, good morning, everybody. It's good to see everyone's faces on this All Saints Sunday. As we remember, uh, gather together in prayer to remember all of the saints that have gone before us, um, and perhaps even those among us. Um, you'll be able to follow along in our service in uh, our bulletin or in the Book of Common Prayer. Um, but let us begin uh, by gathering our souls and selves before God with a moment of musical reflection. Once again, good morning. Our service of morning prayer will begin on page 1 of the bulletin, page 80 of the Book of Common Prayer. We give thanks to the Father, who has made us worthy to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Lord, open our lips. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord is glorious in his saints. Come, let us adore him. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal Father. All creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, Cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the holy church acclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. 
when you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. The Lord is glorious in his saints. Come, let us adore him.
Let us read together Psalm 34, verses 1 through 10 and 22, found on page 2 of our leaflet and also on page 627 of the Book of Common Prayer. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me out of my terror. Look upon him and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him, and he will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints. For those who fear him lack nothing. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished who trust in him. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Revelation to John. <clears throat> After this, I, John, looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one who knows. Then he said to me, these are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this they are seated before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to springs of the water of the life and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The canticle is a song to the Lamb. Splendor and honor and kingly powers are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb, that was slain. For with your blood you have redeemed for God for from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so, to him who sits upon the throne, and to Christ the Lamb, be worshipped and praised, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Praise Lord, Christ. Lord Christ. Let us continue with Canticle 16, the Song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old, that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow mm. of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's Feast of All Saints, Days, uh, All Saints Day is one of those days, along with Christmas and Easter and a few other days, that the Church puts forward to us as one of our indispensable celebrations, a day we cannot let slide without losing something that we can't do without. It is the Feast of the Victory of Jesus, not a remote victory off in the future, not uh, the victory over death on Easter 2,000 years ago, but his victory in all his people, in all the lives lived between then and now, following his example and all the lives yet to come. And no one is to be left out. Not you, not me, not anyone. Now, I never said as a kid, when I grow up, I want to be a saint. I never heard anyone else say it either. I never asked anyone what they were up to and got the response, oh, just, you know, working on my sainthood. I've heard a lot of people say things to the contrary, though, like, he's no saint, that's for sure. Or, what do you think I am, some kind of saint? And yet, a saint is exactly what everyone would want to be if only they really understood what makes a saint. And what's more, 
Saints is exactly what we are, no matter what we do or say or think. It's not that saints never make mistakes, far from it. We often hear that dichotomy, saints and sinners, as if they were at opposite ends of the spectrum. But a saint is simply a forgiven sinner. And since God's forgiveness and mercy are for everyone, from God's perspective, that's all of us. Forgiveness is a process though, it's a lifelong process. And that means that a saint is someone who is day by day being fashioned into a person like Jesus, fully human and fully alive and fully in touch with God. Now, I'm still not sure what I want to be when I grow up, but I'm pretty sure that I like the sound of being fully human and fully alive. In fact, I'm here this morning because as far as I'm able, I desire that above all things. And because I believe that belonging to Jesus is the one thing I've ever encountered in my life, in this whole world, that's given me a real evidence that we can be transformed, transfigured, till we really are the people God created us to be, the people God knows us to be. And God knows us better than we know ourselves. God doesn't see us as isolated all by ourselves. God sees us as members of a family and a fellowship. Now, I do believe that God is free to act anytime, anywhere, but the way God normally acts in the Bible and in the most reliable parts of our Christian history is in this context, in that fellowship, within the church. The proclamation and the process of understanding and digesting the word of God is where God acts. In the covenant of baptism, God acts. And in creating the unity of love that is the sign by which anyone can recognize the true church when it's manifested. And the church, the assembly of those who count on Jesus to save them, that is the communion of saints. Not the church as it once was, but as it is right now at this very minute. Because as I just mentioned, as, and as I'm sure you already know, saints are forgiven sinners. And the main place where we exercise forgiveness and reconciliation in this whole world, the main place we have the best experience of it is right here in the church. Forgiveness is one way of seeing that the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, is breathing the life of Jesus into us and making us his body, alive with the life of God. There is no real life apart from forgiveness and reconciliation. The opposite of forgiveness is hostility, factionalization, us versus them. Believing the lie that your neighbor is your enemy because they're different from you or they disagree with you and all the other things that we know all too well out there that tear apart instead of build up. You just have to look in the world around you to be able to see all that. And if we ever refuse this opportunity to be fully reconciled with one another, then what we're doing is tearing Jesus apart, literally dismembering his body which he has asked us instead to remember. And at the same time, putting ourselves outside that body, outside the church, even if we're here every Sunday or if we tune in every opportunity we get, refusal to be reconciled puts us outside the communion of saints and outside that realm where forgiveness is possible. And it is as the limbs and organs of the body of Jesus that we are raised from the place of the dead. We go to heaven altogether, or we don't go at all. Because if we try to exclude or marginalize anybody, then we're putting ourselves on the side of death and not on the side of life. Jesus says, 
the Lord and God of everything that ever was and is and is to be. He's the God of the living and not of the dead. The psalmist says it too. Jesus was quoting him. For all are alive to God. What the world calls death then, that thing that we fear because it seems to separate us from those we love, isn't real death. Because if they will permit it, if we will permit it, all the dead are in the hands of God. The death we write in our obituaries is uh, difficult. It grieves us, but it is temporary. And the separation caused by that death is temporary, almost by definition. It's part of this world that lives in time that we live in, and it's not part of the eternity where God dwells. Jesus, uh, because to be in Jesus is to be alive, alive with that divine life that nothing can destroy or diminish. We are one with the departed and we will be reunited with them in our bodies because we are alive with them. The same breath, the same spirit that gives them life in the eternal habitations beyond the grave is the same breath that Jesus breathes on us as we gather together in this fellowship. Love is the one thing that you can take with you. We receive a share of that new and eternal life in, uh, and that new humanity by being brought into the body of Jesus, into this saintly fellowship. Inside the body of Jesus, there is no violence, no murder, no tearing apart, nothing heartless, nothing cruel. There is just life in such abundance that we can finally stop worrying about whether someone else got more or less than we think they deserved. Everything is forgiven, healed, transformed into love, and everything that is twisted beyond the point that we can recognize the love in it is ultimately reconciled by being taken into Jesus' body. Even though it's easy to mistake the church for something else, a social club, a service organization, a relic of a bygone age, the truth is that the church is the body of Christ. And it is the only body that he has on earth now. And we are the church, or at least the part of it that's visible here and now. We are part of that great communion, that great cloud of witnesses, the glorious fellowship of the saints in light. And that's a big deal. My own vision of the communion of saints is full of light and beauty and splendor and delight. Reunions with loved ones and friends. It's full of trumpet blasts and singing and music that vibrates you to your very core. It's a place of uproarious fun and endless pleasure. It's a friendly place. It's a place where we get to have the full and unending joy of all the love and friendship that earthly death has and will continue to break apart. There is nothing more high, lofty, noble, holy, splendid beyond telling. And it is, at least as I am now, totally beyond my ability to comprehend or imagine. It's not that it's not real. In fact, it is the fullness of reality itself. But I don't yet have the eyes to see it rightly, nor the heart to imagine clearly what entering into the triumph of the saints is like. I do get these glimpses every now and again of what I'm meant to enjoy, and I, I take heart from them. Looking forward to them can make the dreadful things in my life bearable. But our present experience of the communion of saints I receive mostly in all those little things. Little things that turn out to be not so little. And many of those seemingly little things go on right here in this congregation. Even when we're separated by pandemic, there are all the little tokens of affection, the signs of respect, 
the acts of courtesy and sharing, the conviction that we want to give our best to God and to one another, and the promise that we'll believe the best out of each other. All those things that are symbolized in our service, in the reverence with which we undertake it. It's not so much the grand visions and profound experiences that I'm most aware of when I think of what it means to be part of the communion of saints. It's this. It's right here. It's being with you. Singing together with you. Sharing the peace of Jesus with you. Gathering together and praying at the foot of the cross, wherever we may find ourselves. Experiencing healing love from your hands touching me and knowing that you are praying for me even as I am praying for you. Some days it's almost like I can see you in that prayer space. Forgiving and being forgiven. And in sharing our worship and the holy meal that is at last being restored to our fellowship today, but all the other holy meals too, the snacks at coffee hour, the meals that we share together as fundraisers or fun times, laughing together with you, and sometimes crying together with you. All these things go on here all the time. Even if we have been limited in our ability to be in the same room together, they still go on. And when I can let go of my grieving over the separation from these things that mean so much and can think about it from a bigger perspective, I'm reminded that all of us and all the depth of this fellowship is very much alive and present to God. And even in a world full of anxiety, suspicion, and fear, they still turn my weaknesses and my lonelinesses into joy at having come to a place where people are patient enough with me that I can learn to be my better self, where people pick me up when I fall down and help me carry on, where I have a chance to do the same for others, a place where it's not so hard to love and be loved. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Morning prayer continues as we affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of glory be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints and all virtuous and godly living that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you for all members of your holy Church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our family, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the mis to hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury. Michael, our presiding bishop, and Rob, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God and his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. 
We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us. In your compassion, forgive us as our sins, known and unknown things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite us all to unmute ourselves as we share together as one body the peace of the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, everybody. Peace, peace, Lord. peace, Greg. Peace, peace to all your saints, everybody. Thank you. Peace to all. Well, peace be with you all. I want to share um, uh, and happy All Saints. Um, as we approach All Souls and celebrate All Saints as well, um, I'd just like to take the uh, opportunity to read our uh, necrology of those who have passed away in this parish in the last year, um, just to hold them in a moment of prayer for a moment as we conclude our service. Patricia Worthen, Barbara Shelton, Robert Ragsdale, Paul Tyree, Linda Kenny, Diana Newman, John Hodgkins, Gregory Moyer, Mark Armstrong, Robert Smith, Rita Shepard, June Clark, Hazel Palmer, Terence Wilkins, and Ed Vidion. And now let us gather up all of our prayers and thanksgivings in the words of the general thanksgiving on page 10 of the bulletin. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. May God give you grace to follow his saints in faith, and hope, and love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.